enter through the narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction and many enter through it but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life and only a few find it i am pastor bridget ogbefo inviting you to join me every friday at 6 a.m on the tobago inspirational network for gateway to life where we explore the word of god through the help of the spirit of god good day people of god you're welcome to the gateway to life i am pastor bridget Ogbefo, and this is the day that the lord has made that i want to rejoice and want to also you know implore you to rejoice and be glad in it because the Bible says it is only the living that can praise God. The dead cannot praise Him. Those that have gone down in the grave cannot praise Him. So no matter what you think is going wrong or what you should have that you don't have, no matter what the situation may be, I will implore you to give God unstoppable praise for the fact that you are alive to see today. Hallelujah. I said all that to say it is a good thing to give God praise. Each and every time we wake up, we see the dawn of a new day, we should give God praise. And before we go into what we have, I want us to just say a short word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you because you are a good God and there's none like you. I thank you because you are the giver of life. You are the father of light. You are the one who is able to do more than we could ever think or imagine. You are the one who is able to do exceedingly more than we can ever think or ask, oh God. And Lord, I thank you, oh God, because today is not an exception as we go into the world today. Father, I pray, Lord, that you take absolute control over the world today in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, as your word come out today, oh God, let it come out with life. Let it come out with power. Let it affect lives. Let it touch souls. In the name of Jesus, my Lord and my Father, I pray God, your word that liberates Holy Spirit, that you will interpret these words to the hearer in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I give you all the praise and all the glory. For I know that you have answered, for I prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And so, people of God, this morning, I want us to look at an in, in, interesting topic. I have preached a similar message years back, about four or five years back, but there's a reason sometimes when God reiterates, when God keeps going back to a particular word, it means there's something you and I need to get from that word. Well, I titled it this time, Facing Challenges as Christ Followers. Facing Challenges as Christ Followers. Facing challenges as Christ followers and I took time to look at look up the word challenge and, and came up with challenge is an invitation to compete in a fight match or any other form of competition a challenge is is something that you, you, you that, that, that needs an effort from you you know that needs you to engage you know in, in a fight so that at the end of the day, you may come out victorious. But my prayer today is that despite the challenges of life, despite the hard times of life, you and I will not be defeated. Why? Because we have been termed, we have been called more than conquerors. The one who is the mighty warrior himself, he fought the battles, he engaged in whatsoever challenges that could be, and he won and gave us the victory. And so my joy today is that no no matter how hard the storm may rage, no matter how deep the situation may be, we will come out triumphant and we will come out victorious and we will remain more than conquerors that we have been made by Christ Jesus himself. And so we want to go straight into the scripture for today. It's a long scripture, but I want us to take time to read it together. And that is in 2 Timothy chapter 2. I will be reading from verse 1 through. 18. Look at what the Bible says. It says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. The same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. 
Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet he is not crowned, except he strive lawfully. The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say, that the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Verse 9, wherein I suffer trouble as an evil doer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Hallelujah. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abided faithful, he cannot deny himself. Of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord, that they may, that they may strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Hallelujah. 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, but shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness, and their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hermenius and Philetus who concerning the truth have heard saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some look at 19 it says nevertheless the foundation of god standeth sure having this seal the lord knoweth them that are his and let everyone that nameth the name of christ depart from iniquity hallelujah i took time to read this long scriptures this was apostle paul's uh, 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 message you know it's epistle to uh, 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 Timothy and advising him on how to handle certain situations of life and at some point in time we'll be referring to one verse or the other or, uh, from this long passage that we just read but I've come to tell you today that it is almost impossible it is almost impossible not to face challenges in life as followers of Christ it is almost impossible not to go through trying situations in life. It is almost impossible not to go through unpleasant situations in life. It is not going through the situation. It is not having to face challenges in life. That is the question. The question is how do you handle the challenges that come your way? The question is how do you comport yourself when going through the situation? situations that life may throw at you you know as we normally say life happens what are the things you and i do when life happens what are the things we do when it seems that life suddenly takes a no style what are the things you and i do when it seems as if life suddenly turns its back at us the bible says that this one thing stands sure it says that the Lord knows those that are his. And whosoever named the name of the Lord, the Bible says, must depart from iniquity. In other words, the fact that you are facing challenges, the fact that you are facing trying times, the fact that you got suddenly struck with that particular uh, ailment does not give you a leeway to begin to do the things that are not acceptable before God. Hallelujah. The devil is always trying to throw challenges at us as believers. 
Don't forget the Bible describes it. You know, his ministry is that of to and fro the earth. His ministry is that of seeking for whom to devour. His ministry is threefold, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That is what he's out for. And he does not just aim at any and anybody. He aims at soldiers of Christ. You know, as we say here in the local palace, you don't pelt stones at a tree that have no fruit. You don't pelt stones at a, a, a mango tree that does not have nice mangoes on them. You pelt the stones and all other things to get the fruit. And so also the devil will want to come to ensure that we are broken in the process of going through our challenges in life. That we are damaged, that we are killed, that we are destroyed. But you and I know that we have been equipped, we have been infused with the blood of Christ. We have been equipped with the whole armor of God that the devil cannot withstand. But my question today is when challenges come, what do you do my brother? What do you do my sister? How do you handle the challenges of life that are almost inevitable? If you don't face challenges in life, then something may not be right somewhere. A man of God once illustrated that I respect so much. He said that sometimes when things are going your way, when things, sometimes, sometimes, when things are going your way, everything seems to be going as planned, everything going smooth, no challenges, nothing. He said you have to watch your back. You may be running in the same direction with the devil. It was funny, but makes a lot of sense. He says you may be running in the same direction. He says because when people are running towards the same direction, there may be no, you, you know, head-on collusion. But when you are running from opposite direction, you are bound to hit each other. You are bound to have a clash. You are bound to face difficult times. And so my brother and my sister have come to tell you today, those challenges that you are going through, they have not come to destroy you. They have not come to kill you. They have not come to steal your joy. What will happen to you through those challenges solely depends on what you do with the relationship that you have with God. And so you are not going to give up. You are not going to, you are not going to chicken out. You are not going to just let the devil have his way. You are not going to get entangled with the affairs of this world simply because you are going through try times and difficult situations. Apostle Paul, who wrote this, when you go through the story of this life, all the things that he had to endure, all the things that he went through in life, then you will know that you and I have no excuse than to keep holding on to Christ and trusting him as we even go through the situations that may be unpleasant, that may be painful now. It may be painful now, but joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah. And so we want to look at examples of people who endure challenges and what we can learn from them and the, uh, 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 and the cue we could take from them, people who endure challenges. Number one on my book here is soldiers. I'm talking of earthly soldiers, physical soldiers. You know, I always make reference to it on this program, you know, when necessary, that, you know, the, my country where I come from, there is a compulsory, you know, one year um, um, program that um, you are supposed to go through before you can get employed in any ex sector in the country. And that is the um, National Youth Corps Service, uh, uh, National Youth Service Corps, you know. And what happens is that you actually get trained by military men. You have like three weeks of you no know, rigorous training. You get, you know, a taste of. Uh, 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 what the military um, uh, routine is about and I went through that and I can never forget it for the rest of my life one of the things major thing that I learned from that scheme you don't have control over your time as a soldier you cannot do what you want when you want how you want as a soldier you have discipline is not optional it is important it is mandatory it is compulsory. 
you know, to be disciplined as a soldier. And so I learned so many things from that scheme that has kept me going in life. And you see, in those three weeks when you are going through those training, it's like it will never come to an end. The three weeks actually looks like three months. And feel so as, uh, as well. It looks like it will never come to an end. It looks like, look, uh, when will this stop? I want to sleep when I want to sleep. And um, by the time you are sleeping, you hear the, uh, 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 the bingo. You have to be up. You have to be on the parade ground when you ought to be at the parade ground. You have to participate in every program that is, you know, a mark for, for, for the day. And at the end of the day, you are given a certificate. And that certificate equips you to be qualified, to be employed anywhere you want to work in the country. Without that certificate, a lot of people will get in. Why am I going deep into that? Soldiers are disciplined. They go through challenges. They go through difficult times. They go through trying situations. At that time when they are going through that situation, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel pleasant. But they go through it and at the end of the day, they are equipped with their uniform from their equipped with those uh, 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 and guns and all that that make people don't misbehave around them. Hallelujah. A soldier in active service does not entangle himself with the affairs of civilians. A soldier in active service is there to defend his cause. He does not play around the same way you and I are soldiers of Christ. And so even though we face challenges, we cannot, we cannot cave in because of the challenges that life brings. As a matter of fact, one of the rules we were told there, when you're on the parade ground, we were taught that even if at that time an insect is biting you or an insect is trying to you know even go in your nostrils that was how it was explained to us you must not move that is difficult ain't it you must not move you must stay where you are until you have finished your assignment for that moment so soldiers are highly disciplined. And if you and I say we are soldiers of Christ, what challenges would make you throw away your discipline in Christ? Hallelujah. Look at what the Bible says in that same Second Timothy chapter 2. We want to reiterate what it says in, in verse 3 and 4. Look at what it says. It says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. It says, now therefore, endure hardness, endure the challenges, endure the difficult times, endure the trying situation that you may be going, now, going through now. And show yourself to be a good soldier of Christ. Because may I tell you or remind you, as long as you name the name of Christ, as long as you have chosen to walk this part of Christ, things may not go the way you want them to go. Things may not all be rosy. Things may not all be beautiful. But I come to tell you today that we serve a God who makes all things beautiful in his time time that time may not be your time that time may not be according to your calculation that time may not be according to your expectation but tell you what he will make it beautiful in due season and so like that soldier who is highly disciplined who knows the rules and can abide to them i have come to call you today to stand like good soldiers of christ and endure that hardship that you may be going through because you know why it will not be there forever you know why it will not remain this way always god is going to wipe your tears away god is going to turn things around god is going to mobilize men for your your help. God is going to change things around. God is going to move you from where you are to where you're supposed to be. But you must stand in as a good soldier of Christ. 
we must take that cue from soldiers. A soldier may be going through, you know, difficult times in his home. He may be having challenging situations in his home, but he dare not take it to his place of work. He does not take it to, to war front. He must be able to brace up and endure the trying times that he may be going through back home and face the challenges that uh, you know before him and act as a good soldier and so you may be going through that trying times and it seems oh hallelujah thank you holy spirit the spirit of god is just dropping in, in me you are watching me right now you always there for people you rise up you know to pick up their their, their 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 matters and you take it into prayer and pray to god and you always get positive results but it seems like when you are going through your own challenges nobody is there for you nobody seems to be standing up for you nobody seems to want to you know be in in the place of prayer for you i've come to tell you Hold on, my brother. Hold on, my sister. Help is around the corner. Don't let it slip away. Help is around the corner. And God is going to do something awesome and glorious. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but I see tears being wiped away. I see situations being turned around. I see lives being transformed. I see answers being given to questions. And so I've come to tell you, hold on like that good soldier of Christ because challenges will never go away. They will always come. They will always be there. But you have to hold on. We have to take a cue also from an athlete that is running for a prize. Take a cue from an athlete that is running from, for, for, for a prize. You know the Bible says in that same Second Timothy chapter 2, look at what it says for, for in verse 5. And it says, if a man also strive for masteries yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully and so i took time to go and do a little study about this um, track and feed uh, uh, um, event and i realized that there are certain rules and regulations that every man is supposed to be in his lane that you cannot cross your lane to a next lane else you will be disqualified it doesn't matter if you came first at the end of the race hallelujah it doesn't matter if you got to the finish in line first once the rules have been broken once the rules have been tampered with once you cross your lane to the other Soto, irrespective from the uh, of the uproar from the spectators irrespective of the reaction of the spectators the rules still have to be upheld and so even if you run as a good athlete and you jump lane and you finish first you will be disqualified you will not be given the crown you will not be given the medal so i've come to tell you today take that cue from atlas stay in your lane challenges may come difficult times may come it may seem that you will not be able to make it through but i've come to tell you remain in your lane keep to the rules look unto jesus hold on to jesus and Run this race, hallelujah! And at the end, we shall look back and say, Yeah, we are more than conquerors, hallelujah! And so, looking at athletes, I want us to quickly see what the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12, and look at verse 1. It says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us let us run with patience the race that is set before us challenges that are set before us difficult times that are set before us let us run through with patience let us hold on to the hand of the master himself and walk through circumstances and situations of life with patience and like that athlete <laughs> come on you will come out victorious 
glorious uh, and I was just having a little imagination when the athletes kick off uh, and they begin to run <laughs> and the one that jump lane begin to run with high speed <laughs> the man who is behind him who knows that he had jumped the lane he has nothing to be disturbed about because he knows that that athlete will be disqualified he takes his time to finish his own race properly he does not also jump lane and say because the man in front of me has crossed lane and he's not stopped he's still going I will do the same the same way I've come to tell you my brother and my sister stay in your lane and endure what seems to be a difficult situation right now because it may look difficult it may look unbearable it may look as if it doesn't have an end but I tell you that God has plans good plans are that for you and so lastly I want us to quickly glance through what the Bible says in that same second Timothy chapter 4 let's see what the Bible says in verse 7 it says I have fought a good fight I have finished my course I have kept the faith. So let's be like Apostle Paul this morning or whatever time of the day you may be watching and listening to me. Let us fight a good faith. Even in the midst of the challenges of life. Even in the midst of that trying situation. Even in the midst of that you know, difficult time that you may be going through. Let us fight a good fight. Let us keep our slate clean. Let us look unto Jesus alone. I have told you many times and I will repeat it again. To Two masters cannot be in a ship. Two masters cannot be in a ship lest there will be chaos on that ship. I want you to know that the only one who has the solution to whatsoever challenges you may be going through is Christ Jesus himself. You cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot put one foot in and one foot out. There is no help in obia men. There is no help in voodoo. There is no help in, 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 in any other than Christ Jesus. And so I will be wrapping things up there here at this time. And by the grace of God, we will come back to finish this particular message. But before I leave, I want you to know that, that those challenges that you are going through sometimes may be a way of telling you to pause and have a rethink. It may be a way to tell you to pause and listen to what God has to say. And as the word of God says, you will always hear that small, still voice saying behind you, this is the way, walk ye in it. And until I come back next week, I want you to know that you are a champion and you are born to rule and reign in life. Hallelujah. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it, but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. I am Pastor Bridget Ogbefun, inviting you to join me every Friday at 6 a.m. on the Tobago Inspirational Network for Gateway to Life, where we explore the Word of God through the help of the Spirit of God.